Good morning, I am Shara Folier, and for today, I'm going to tackle about the basic baking tools and equipment. But before that, let's have the learning objectives. At the end of the lecture, the lifelong learners must be able to identify the different tools and equipment in baking, use the tools properly, and value the importance of knowing the different usage of these different tools. What is tools and equipment? Who had the idea of what it is? Alright, you have a point. So, a tool is generally a single object while equipment can be a set of objects, an instrument or a more complex item than a tool. Tool is a handheld device that aids in accomplishing a task while equipment is a tool that are used of operating things. Utensils are tools actively used in the cooking process such as tongs, sooty pans, stew pots, mixing pans, stainless cold table pans, and spatulas. Equipment would be your cold table, electric mixers, stoves, refrigerator, fryers, and grills. So basically, tools are those things that can be handled and easy to bring. While equipment are this requires electricity to be operated as well as big things that are complex. Basic tools in baking. First, we have the measuring cups and spoons. The measuring cups and measuring spoons are used to help estimate the volume of liquid, solid, and semi-solid foods. Measuring spoons are used to measure a small quantity of ingredients while measuring cups are to measure large quantity. Next, we have the whip or wire whisk. It is a loops or stainless steel wire fastened to a handle. Whips with a few stiff wires are used for mixing and blending, and whips with many flexible wires are used for whipping foams such as whipped cream and egg foams also called as whisk. Whisk is used to blend ingredients together quickly to incorporate air into ingredients such as egg whites or heavy cream in order to increase the volume of the mixture. Example, when we beat eggs, it becomes foamy and high in volume. Also, we have the spatula. These spatulas help mix the dough, scrape stuck parts out of the pans, and fold hot omelets. Among other things, rubber and silicon spatulas are frequently used as scrapers. So, also spatula is used for frosting cakes and to spread toppings in it. We have the spring form pan, a cake pan with a removable bottom, used primarily for baking cheesecake and other items that are too delicate to be easily removed from the standard cake pans. So. There are lots of kinds of pans, but this one can help you work with convenience, especially if you are going to bake a cake. There is no need to scrape it just too much that makes cake deform. By this, you're just going to unlock the side of the pan and your cake will come out perfectly. Also, we have a round metal screen supported in a stainless steel half frame and it is called a sieve or a sifter. It is used for sifting flour and other dry ingredients. We sift ingredients, especially flour, because it will break up any lumps, which means you can get a more accurate measurement. Sifted flour is also much lighter and airier than unsifted flour, and is easier to mix into other ingredients when baking butter and doughs. Next, we have the mixing bowls. Mixing bowls are mainly used for mixing ingredients or whipping cream using a whisk. So, mixing bowls, this is where all ingredients are being mixed. It supports bakers to combine all the ingredients that are needed to make a mixture. And nowadays, there are also multifunctional bowls because the supplied lid also makes them suitable for storing various foods and ingredients. Let's move to the basic equipments in baking. And we have the electric mixer. It is a stand mixer or an electric kitchen appliance that has a mixing bowl with a motor and a rotating wire whisk. Stand mixers are used to blend, chop, whip, and knead ingredients for cooking and baking. 
Electric mixer are also used to handle big quantity of ingredients that makes mixing and blending easy because it is being plugged into electricity then all you gonna do is to observe if the mixture is already achieved the right consistency. And now we have the oven. Ovens are of course the workhorses of the bakery and pastry shops and are essential for production of bread, cakes, cookies, pastries, and other baked items. Ovens are enclosed spaces in which food is heated, usually by hot air, except in the case of microwave ovens which are not especially useful in a big shop. Ovens are the equipment that becomes one of the most essential in baking. It is the one that completes the process which a baking happens and produces baked goods. In the industry, oven comes in different sizes and forms as well as in different kinds. Several kinds of ovens are used in baking. Stem is important in the baking of many kinds of bread. And now let's watch the demonstration about the proper usage of tools and equipment in baking and also the measurement of dry and wet ingredients. Good day, I am Shara Malinshan Folier and I'm here to demonstrate the proper ways in measuring dry ingredients and liquid ingredients. The right way in measuring ingredients when it comes to cooking and baking, make sure to use the correct measuring cups and measuring spoon when measuring the ingredients. Here are the dry ingredients to be measured. Dry ingredients consist of flour, cornstarch, baking powder, and brown sugar. Before measuring the dry ingredients, you have to sift them first to remove any foreign particles on it. This is the baking powder. And the flour. Make sure to follow the directions in the recipe exactly as given. It will almost always have a significantly impact on product's texture. This is the one cup flour sifted. This means to sift one cup of flour after measuring it out. When said one cup sifted flour, you must sift the flour first and then measure out a cup once it has been sifted. Use a spoon or a scooper to scoop dry ingredients. Level off flour with a blunt edge of knife or a spatula. Never press or shake the cup whenever possible because this will affect the product. The same with flour, baking powder must be measured. This is really a simple process. Use measuring spoons, not the one you use to stir soup or sugar in your coffee. If you don't require a big scoop, just remember to level off the spoon. It is because baking powder will be used as a small quantity. Well, some ingredients must be packed. Most likely the brown sugar. Into the measuring cup, firmly pack the brown sugar and wipe away any excess. These are the already measured dry ingredients. Setting the measuring cup on a level surface and reading the measurement at eye level rather than from the top is the best approach to achieve an accurate measurement for a liquid. Some liquid ingredients can be used using the glass measuring cups or honey, chocolate syrup, water, and other liquids. Same liquid ingredients must be frequently be measured for the same recipe. By measuring everything in one measuring cup and pouring one item after another, you may save time and utensils. 
This is something I do all the time because it reduces amount of dishes I have to wash. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned from our discussion and now let's move to the assessment. The assessment consists of two parts which is the identification and the safe version. So I'll give you 30 minutes to answer your exam.